do you feel like you could have gone longer or does this truly feel right? No, this feels right, sadly. Yeah. Um, there were, four was the number that I first felt was the right number after season one. After we get picked up and I knew we weren't getting canceled and we had a chance to, for us to call our own shot, four was the, I was thinking 50 episodes, which is roughly four years. And I sort of like, there were various times when I was like, oh, hold on, maybe five. And other times I was like, well, actually, maybe three. But uh, it didn't stray too, too much from four. Like four, it, it consistently, as we laid the story out with the writing staff, that was the number that kept seeming like the right number, which is a huge bummer. <laughs> yeah. If you had been given an unlimited budget, what would be the location in the world you would have wanted to go and what kind of scene would you have wanted to do there? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. That's a really good question. I actually think that if we had had an unlimited budget, I would have sunk it more into like the back lot where we shot because we had to do a lot of visual effects. It's great and it's controllable and we were able to like do a lot of stuff outside, which is, which I don't know where we would have done that. I think we, but we had to do a lot of visual effects to just make it not seem like we were in Universal City. So I think I would have like, an unlimited budget I would have built out that place and been able to walk more I mean the Huntington well like the Huntington Garden in Pasadena which is what like heaven basically was we could only go there like once a week maybe and it's really expensive and it's hard to get to so uh, if we could have built a Huntington Garden adjacent to our set and also built like Tahani's Mansion a functioning <laughs> a functioning Tahani's Mansion would have saved us a lot of time but I, yeah I, I mean there are, we go to some new places in the fourth season, um, thanks to not the unlimited budget, but the, the generosity of NBC Universal Television. So um, I don't think that there's like a location that I would have gone to. I think I would have just made the world of fake heaven look a little nicer. <laughs> Did you have the ending planned out from the beginning? Like now that was the fourth? You know? We had the original idea for the ending, the, the core of it we had. Uh, I started to think about it and then we developed in early in season two didn't commit to it until we were sure it was the right ending and that no one could beat it and then starting before we started writing season four we knew we had it so it, it stayed pretty much the same which is great the uh, eleanor and tv relationship you have broken them up and i think every conceivable <laughs> yeah that is available. uh one my question is where do you why well, you can't really tell us where it's going but is there any trophy you haven't used yet that you have in the back room? Well, we got to avoid some of the, you know, classic pitfalls of, like, someone has an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend who, like, shows up unexpectedly one night or whatever. Like, this was, it was a way to tell a story about, you know, a big question that looms over the show is, is our soulmates real? And the show, I think, takes the position that that soulmates as like in the way that most people think of them aren't real that there are just people who you build relationships with over a long period of time who sort of become a person that your soul is connected to but no magic creature is going to go you and you get together so what we were able to do in a way that sorry I did that that was my fault um (laughs) The thing, the part of it that we really like is that we're just telling a story about two people who spent a lot of time together, who hated each other at times and were driven crazy by each other and had very different backgrounds and histories and life experiences, but who like just through going through a million crazy experiences ended up being bonded to each other in a significant way, which I think is a, I think personally is a good way to tell the story of how a relationship works. If it works. I really need to wrap this up. Wait, last one. She she got it in under the wire. I was going to say, there have been a lot of philosophical debates on the series. What's been your favorite to play out? Like the trolley and all that. I think the essential... This is getting kind of wonky, but I think the essential de- debate... Uh, I pitch the show as what it, what it means to be a good person. And there's an episode when Chidi lost his mind and cooked a bunch of chili and stuff. And he lays out, like, there's three ways that... In the, at least in the Western world, for thousands of years, there's really three ways people think about this, right? It's either you're a Kantian and you think that there are rules and you got to follow the rules, or you're a consequentialist and you think it, whatever you do that has the best results, that's what matters. And then there's the Aristotelian view, the virtue ethics view, which is like you just got to practice, you got to try. Well, that's they're all virgins. There's a million other ones. Rational selfishness, it's bunk, and anyone who believes in it is insane. Uh, <laughs> 
or you're like Paul Ryan and you, you're like a grown man who still thinks Ayn Rand is really I cool just, and interesting. I feel, like, I feel like Eleanor would be such a rational selfishness person. We had a whole thing we were going to do where she reads Ayn Rand and is like, I found my girl. <laughs> um, but like th- that, just having that debate from a million angles has been like, has been really fun because I don't know that there is an answer. The show definitely takes a point of view, I would say. The show takes the virtue ethics point of view that it's just practice, just try, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, screw up, try again, screw up, try again. So this, ha- being able to like t- do a TV show where we're talking about that issue that people have been talking about for 3,000 years, that's been really fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'm not sure if this was ever on, but... <laughs> <laughs>